Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and this time we're focused on Aperture. The simplest description of Aperture is that it's the size of the opening that light goes through to land on your camera's image sensor and make your picture. And when you change the size of the opening, it'll change your exposure in a few different ways. There are a few terms that mean the same thing as Aperture. One of them is iris. Now that's the term that videographers use and it means the exact same thing. Another term is f-stop and that actually refers to the number that says how big the opening is and you hear things like Aperture and f-stop used interchangeably all the time. Hello. Good morning, neighbor. What is your aperture setting? I'm shooting at f11 because I want everything in focus. That's great. At first, the hard thing to get used to is that the bigger number is a smaller opening and the small number is a bigger hole. Essentially, f1 would be a really big opening and f22 or f32 would be really, really small. But each lens has limitations and a range of available f-stops. In other words, not every lens can go as wide as f1 or as narrow as f32. So generally speaking, f-stops start at f1 and then if you shrink the opening so half as much light gets through, we call that a stop of light. And then the number is f1.4. Then if you reduce the light by half again or one more stop, now you're at f2. And we call that changing the aperture to let in less light, stopping down. Full f-stop measurements are f1, 1.4, f2, 2. The f-stop representations used to measure light transmission of most modern lenses is based on a sequence of the power of the square root of two. 22, 32, and so on. No lens can have every possible available aperture, but they do all have a range of apertures. In other words, even if a lens is said to be an f2.8 lens, that just refers to the widest or the maximum aperture. Hold on, there are lenses that only have a single non-adjustable aperture. Sometimes you'll hear a zoom lens called something like an 18 to 135, f3.5 to 5.6. That means that the lens zooms from 18 millimeters to 135 millimeters. And the maximum or widest aperture of 3.5 is gonna be at the wide end of your zoom, that 18 millimeter range. And then when you zoom into 135 millimeters, your maximum aperture is gonna be f5.6. Then, if your zoom is somewhere in between 18 and 135, your maximum aperture is gonna be between 3.5 and 5.6. On the minimum end of the aperture range, if that same lens has a minimum aperture of f22, that won't change no matter where you zoom. These days, most lens apertures are controlled by a setting in the camera, and most aperture settings are in third stop increments, so there are fractional settings in between those full stop settings that I mentioned earlier. Legacy lenses, which may still work with modern DSLR cameras, but which don't have modern electronic connections to allow the camera to communicate with the lenses, are equipped with an aperture ring for manual adjustment. But even if your lens has an aperture ring, it might have a setting or a switch that gives the camera control over the aperture. And those aperture rings usually have detents so that you can click to the aperture setting you want. Not so fast. Lots of cinema lenses have de-clicked aperture rings. They're designed for video use, so pro videographers can smoothly ride their exposure during filming. But why bother changing aperture? Because of how it looks in your final image. In a portrait, a really wide aperture like f2.8 or f1.4 can flatten the depth of field dramatically and make things look beautiful. The focus can be shallow and only the eyes be in focus while the ears are a little bit soft and the background totally blurry. Around f8 or f11, once you focus in a landscape, pretty much everything in the foreground and the background is going to be in focus. And the special thing around f22 or f32 is that bright points of light will have beams coming off them. So those are a few of the things that you can change by adjusting your aperture. An aperture is just one setting that makes up your exposure, but once you understand it, you can take advantage of a setting lots of cameras have called aperture priority. That's where you tell the camera what aperture to use and it automatically sets all the other stuff like shutter speed and how sensitive the sensor is to light so you get a good exposure. The entrance pupil made of the diaphragm blades is not the aperture. That's because what is commonly referred to as the aperture of any given lens is actually a ratio of a focal length of a lens to the diameter of the entrance pupil. And while diaphragm blades open to proper diameter for a particular aperture setting to allow light to come through, 
This round opening is not the shutter. Some lenses can be even wider than F1, but that's pretty rare. Now, wide aperture lenses let in lots of light, and as a result, they let you use a faster shutter speed. Wide maximum aperture lenses like an F2.8 or an F2 and wider are sometimes referred to as fast glass. So you might hear something like, Do we have any fast glass? It will be dark soon, and I'm not sure there will be enough light to shoot. Yes, I do. I have a 50 millimeter, 1.4, and a 70 to 200 millimeter, 2.8. We've talked a lot about changeable lens DSLRs, but these aperture characteristics apply to mirrorless camera lenses and point and shoot camera lenses, even cell phone camera lenses, but you usually don't have as much control when you're talking about a really basic camera. That wraps it up for this episode of Focus. Focus is made possible thanks to B&H Photo, Kelby One, and these nice people. If you have any questions or comments for Focus, leave them in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe. We don't want you to miss a single episode. See you next time.